Hey, how are you, Seth? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Realizing I flipped my camera trying to do that, and then all of a sudden it was pointing at the top. I was like, oh, crap. This has got to reverse. That's why we do this a little early. Oh, you were almost upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to be able to see. Fine. Uh, oh. We are use Google Meet, so I was like, Zoom, Zoom. I haven't had a Zoom meeting, and I can't tell you how long. <laughs> so oh, really? <laughs> yeah, our family is all Google Meet stuff. Well, I figured what's not broke, don't fix. So yep. we started with this format during um, quarantine, so sticking with it. I saw all the, the balls behind you. They're gorgeous. Thank you. So is that not coming up? Um, The video was there. Now it's not. Yeah. Maybe you just hit the button by accident. I'm getting a tap to speak and telling me to leave. Please join audio. No, no, we'll try this again. Oh, weird. Hmm. I love technical difficulties. Of course. What would life be without him? <clears throat> I haven't even picked my colors. Is there a certain number that we should? Nope. You can do it as many or as few as you want in your design. That's a nice part. OK. okay that's you. I'm going to make you co-host while, while we're doing this so that If you need to do or show or whatever. I mean, I've got a PowerPoint. I just didn't know what the expectation was for, you know, what you wanted to see. So. Um, I don't mind a PowerPoint. If you want to go through it and then do a um, an actual follow along kind of a thing. Yeah, so I figured so people would be like, what is this stuff? You know, they've never heard of it. That's what most of mine were. So I got a little bit of the history of it. Okay, so that would be great. All right, I'm not going to let anybody in yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I swear I had this all worked out until the camera came on and it was like going reverse. And I'm like, okay, I can't see my ceiling. It was supposed to look at the table. There you go. I found my colors. <clears throat> you need to see the large kennel of
Oh, Kelly is here. You might know some of our guests. Yeah, because you're New York, right? We are New York, but yeah. I have a lot of the Virginia people. Oh. Yeah, I did the the one in the Northern Virginia, and they're like, I can't make it. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. This. <laughs> Do you know Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Scallon, Scalen? No, that's not a name that rings a bell. Okay. Um... She's a huge fan. Hey, Zoe. All right. I'm I'm good. If that works, then I can I was just seeing how that zoomed in, so that'll work fine. Is that close enough? I think so. I mean, because I'll hold this and that way they can at least see the stitch and I can get a little closer if need be. So that should be fine. Oh, you stitched it in white? I wrapped it in white, yeah, so it was ready. So that way any stitching I do is easier for anyone to see. Okay. Not gonna stick. <clears throat> Let me see. Well, we'll go with that. I really appreciate this. Oh, no, not wrong. I love doing this and I love meeting new people and, and art spirit artsy spirited what's the word i'm trying to say um kindred spirits there we go kindred artsy spirits this thing has been amazing for meeting other like-minded people that's great yeah usually we kind of i don't know if you know the term kibitz you ever heard that it's a Yiddish term? So we kibitz yep. a little bit for like five or ten minutes to let the you know people dribble in, and then by like seven ten, um, we get going. Should I make you co-host on both? But yeah, yeah, I might as well. It shouldn't matter because I'm just going to kind of leave that one as the camera, so that way I could say, you know, when I'm doing a close up, they can pop to look for that visual. I took the volume off of that, so it shouldn't come on. Okay, and you can you can pin it whenever you're ready. I guess gotcha. you know so that everybody gets the the bigger. And that's what I was just going to say. If I'm sharing a PowerPoint, how do I do that in Zoom? It's been so long. I'm like looking at um, all the. If you that. roll over the bottom of your screen, there should be um, a, sh a green share screen button. Right in the middle. Yep, I see it now. Yeah. So whenever you're ready to do that, you could just hit it. <clears throat> So I guess your school year ended, right? You were done? Last, last Thursday, we were done with kids. And then I had Friday and then Monday. And Monday was late because my music teacher moved. And so I was on the hiring committee. So I was at school till 7 o'clock on Monday night. Oh, wow. Doing six interviews in a row with my principal and assistant principal. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're still in school doing uh regents exams that we ah. do in new york which are torture um so we have those for a week and a half and then our our actual final day is the 27th so oh i love those little flowers i was just gonna say so it says i'm screen sharing but i'm not sure where i'm looking for it in zoom anymore but you see it so we're good yep i see it and i love those um the stars yeah, one. those are one I found online. I should probably replace it with mine, but I was like, eh, when I was trying to do it, I had uh -huh. sold most of mine. <laughs> uh -huh. so, all right, I'm good when you are. Is that all set? And we'll hope that this camera doesn't move too much. And if it does, I'll just apologize. Okay. So let me see. What time do we have here? Six fifty-seven. I'll open the the room. Okay. So we can all kind of yeah. And so this is your welcome screen, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, let's move this. Ah, 
My mom is a participant as well. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody's coming in. Um, view. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited for this session. Carolyn, you okay? <laughs> you look like you, you're in the glare of the sun. Oh, you're outside. You are actually outside. Look at you. Okay. I'm in North Carolina in the mountains. Nice. Say hi to my brother for me. He's down there. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Today's first day, the sun is shined over here on the side. <laughs> is it hot? No, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it was a little warm, um, like just sitting in one place with the sun shining on us late this afternoon. Uh -huh. But no, it's, it's a beautiful weather. It's been perfect. I'm, I'm dreading going back to Texas because it's not going to be like this. <laughs> it'll probably be a sauna in texas it will be i'm on my ipad um normally i'm on my laptop i don't know how to see other people all i could see is you and the, you the slideshow see. oh you can't see scott no i don't know if i have something a setting different oh huh, maybe i can only see you and the slideshow you. If you go to view, you can probably change it to the sidebar. Okay. <laughs> if you want to see I'm everything. trying to find it again. I, for some reason, have sat, sat with the sun in my eyes. I can't see the word view. I mean, I know where it is normally. Top. But I'm on my iPad. Corner? Oh, you're on an iPad. I don't know how those. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? I'm going to switch my view. It's an annotation of screen. I don't need to annotate the screen. Go away. So let's see. Kelly's here. Sherry's here. Jeannie's here. Again, I feel like doing. I'm doing the romper room. Welcome, Heather. Hello. Oh, look, I clicked the plus sign. Now I can see other people. Michelle, Laura, Jody. I thought my mother was here, unless she gave up and, huh, maybe she couldn't connect. She'll be back. So I don't, can, I can, if everybody can see Scott, this is Scott Russell. Hi. He's like a friend of a friend of a friend that I stalked <laughs> when I saw his amazing, and I don't know how to say this appropriately. Tamari. <laughs> Tamari. Um, I was going to say something else. <laughs> which would have not been good. Um, so yeah, the, the Tamari just caught my eye and I just, anything brand new like this that looks so intricate and detailed just makes me want to figure out how to do it. So I can't wait. So I'm in the middle of wrapping the first part. Uh -huh. Is there any particular trick to it or I just keep going and going? You just keep going around and around. I mean, I might wrap mine white you'll be able to see the stitching but I mean if you have a color you just keep wrapping until you don't see the white styrofoam That's and do I switch color. switching directions too as I'm yeah, going kind of going all over back and Perfect. forth and around when Perfect. I was the, the I would assume you don't said, want you know, to see any of the white of the ball right yeah yeah okay. color is easy to learn on you know so that way you can see the white but you know if you it, the book when I was going through it to learn is like, oh, you know, three inches, plan on wrapping for about 15 to 20 minutes. And so if you're talking, you know, extend that, you know, kind of when I did this in person, I gave everyone their color. And then I started talking about all the history I'm going to give you. And they wrapped it and it took about 15 minutes and they were mostly done. So, okay. I'm almost done. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly. Yeah, it is. It's kind of just like a random looks like a ball of, you know, a ball of yarn that your cat is playing with. 
It's a whole spool of thread. Depends on the size thread. Like I have those that are like this. So like oh, okay. I've gotten an industrial size that you do for if you're doing major sewing. So, you know, I get some that are bigger. Yeah. So it just, the timing. So were we already supposed to be starting to wrap? Am I you like can. behind the eight ball here? Yeah, you can wrap. I mean, it'll, you'll. But just regular sewing thread. Regular yes. sewing thread. Yep. The thin stuff, if it's the mercerized, the shiny stuff, that's going to not work for you. So, I mean, you just want the regular cotton sewing thread because the okay. other stuff is just going to keep slipping and sliding as you try to wrap. Right. Okay. Give okay. your bright, brightness jacked up. I can see fine. Okay. Hello, mother. Hello, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I was having trouble getting in for whatever yes, reason. I saw that. I saw you were there and then you were not. Oh. So okay. you can still see me and hear me, huh? Yeah. Okay, good. A nice size group today. <laughs> Can you use yarn uh, for wrapping the ball? Yeah. I'm not sure. The wrap the ball, you want a thin, oh, like okay. a sewing thread. Um, okay. To do the stitching part, and they do I use, last. when I learned, I used embroidery floss, but that's what I had, even though it's a little bit. I'll just mute everybody because I'm hearing background stuff, and Scott's trying to give instruction. Go ahead. Oh, did I mute you, Scott? I'm sorry. <laughs> Back on. So yeah, so um, you want to wrap it in sewing thread, um, and then you can do the stitching of the design either with a crochet thread, or like a five or eight, if you have different sizes, or if you don't have that, embroidery floss will work. When I was starting, I did a couple with embroidery floss. It's just a little thicker, so you you know, it takes up a little bit more space at a time. So I mean, it's easy if you're like, oh, give me a try, see if I like this. Before you put all the expense out, if you have embroidery floss, that's an easy, you know, way to try out. So yeah, if you're you're joining and you haven't wrapped the ball with whatever your sewing thread is, just start, and it literally will look like a ball of yarn that a cat would be playing with because you'll be you know wrapping in all kinds of different directions, and the goal is just to hide the white styrofoam. This is a white thread. I wrapped it in white thread, so it'll be easy for you to see. But you can see Steph has hers in blue. So does not matter your color, but it will take a good 15 minutes. So, you know, <laughs> I sit, you know, when I have a bunch done, I'll sit and watch TV and, you know, I can usually get four done every hour long TV show, you know, if I can get through. So. And Steph, you just tell me when to start going, and I'll, I'm good because you know about how many people you're you're waiting for. So, um, well, it it varies from week to week. Let's see. How about if we do? Uh, can we get like a, a a raised hands if everybody is going to work along with the presentation? Like, if you're already wrapped, can I get a, either a thumbs up or a Raised hands, one, two, no, two, two, no, <laughs> I'm seeing thumbs down. All right, well, all right, you know what? Um, those who are prepared will work along and everybody else can catch up later on. Well, that's what I said. I mean, I'll do the presentation and that'll give them about 10, 15 minutes of wrapping too. So, and then we'll get, get into it. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so I guess, what time is it? 7.07? .07? Whenever you're ready. Um, go okay. Ahead. You could introduce yourself and uh, take it away. All right. Well, thank you. Well, so I'm Scott Russell. I've just finished last Thursday, finished my 23rd year teaching elementary school at the same elementary school. Uh, this was my first year of having a kindergarten parent come in with their child and look at me and say, hi, Mr. Russell. So that was a fun, you know, age kick in the face this year. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, 
but I have been uh, with, you know, art associations. I was the state president for Virginia. I was the regional president with the Southeast region for NAEA. So I've been around and done a bunch of things uh, along that line. And But through all of it, you know, worked with finding different creative outlets. Um, my degree was in painting and art education and did that and did a lot with drawing and colored pencil. And then I kind of fell into this and I can give you the story as to why I started doing Tamari from that uh, in a little bit. But, you know, my mother was a, a seamstress. So I was around yarn and, th and thread and stitchery all of my life. So I have things from cross stitch kits that I did way back when I was six and seven years old. So stitching has always kind of been part of my life because with having a mother that sews and she was home and dad was driving as a truck driver, it was like, oh, well, we'll do this together kind of thing. So Tamari, so you see the example, these are not mine. So I found this picture, I should take a picture of mine, but I, when I was putting this together, I didn't have them with me when I was setting up the display. So, would you, uh, you can see. post your pictures or leave it? No. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'll hold some of mine up in a little bit. So, but Tamari is, it started out as a sport. <laughs> uh, so, you can kind of see how it originally was like a handball. It was used with leather and straps. And they were, it was originally, that version of it was called Kimari. And so, they would wrap that leather strips and herbs. And it was kind of almost like a hacky sack game. And so eventually over time, you know, the leather transformed into some of the leftover silk scraps from some of the kimonos and it became a little bit more decorative and a little bit more a softer side or a feminine kind of version. And then they would be playing it less with their feet and more kind of elbow, you know, bouncing around kind of back and forth. And so that was a big part of the Edo period. So if you want your little history lesson, so that's kind of where we're diving out of that region. Um, and so, and then the, once we started seeing cotton thread production um, being around, that's it evolved even more from that. So we started seeing less of the wrapping and more of the embroidery design into the folk art. So Tamari itself, Okay, you're seeing the beginning, the te in the beginning means hand, and you can see the symbol for that. And then mari, you know, basically means ball. So your the combination is hand ball. Uh, they are a cherished gift in that society. So the, showing friendship and loyalty because of the time commitment that goes into creating one. Uh, so you, there are some with, uh, when they make tamari, they might, you know, write a slip and tuck it into the center and be like, this Tamari is to give you strength or peace or patience or something. I've done a couple where I've actually written it on the styrofoam of the ball before I started wrapping up too. And then you kind of imbue those feelings into the Mari as you're working through them. Uh, they were a children's gift, you know, a New Year's kind of gift for celebrating the New Year. That was another one of the traditions that had. Uh, and so, you know, we see a lot of symbolism coming along with this kind of art form. So why and how? So that picture uh, that you're seeing on screen, that was my learning cycle. So I talked about my mother being a seamstress. And so she actually had this, you know, book club of different, you know, cross stitch and sewing books and like every, there was a club. And so every so often it was like, you buy certain amount of books and you get this one a, a certain book free that you could pick and so like she would buy some and then she'd say oh well it looks interesting and this was a book in that catalog way back when i was in gosh uh late middle school or maybe beginning high school so yeah i'm not going to go into those numbers uh but so it was a while ago um and so I got it thinking, oh, you know, it was the embroidery. We both thought it looked cool. And I'm like, oh, we could do the embroidery kind of stitches we were both comfortable with and do it on this round ball. So I got it and looked through the book. Still have the book. It's right here. So uh, and I did the wrong thing. So I just thought, oh, you know, go through. I read some of the directions and then I kind of thumbed through and I was like, oh, I want to do that one, you know, further along in the book realizing that they get progressively harder as you start through. 
And I picked one that was probably a little bit too complex that I should have gone right to because my first Mario was such an utter epic fail. I couldn't pin it. I couldn't figure out how to make the lines work. I just did not do anything. And so I was like, yeah, no. And it went in a drawer and I moved and went to college and it was still in a drawer and came back and I kind of chucked that one. And I, you know, the book stayed with my mother. And then when I moved into my own place, I got some of the things that I have and that book came with me. And literally it stayed in a drawer until the year of COVID. And I was working my way through all of my closets and boxes and things and like clearing out all the junk. And I pulled that one, the book out and I looked and I was like, oh yeah. And it went in the to donate pile. And I was the type that was like, you know, cleaning up other and I kept looking back at the book and like, I should be able to do this. It's math. I was honestly a dual major in art and math for a while in, in college. I'm like, all it is is math, it's geometry, it's stitching. Why could I not do this? So it like went from the to donate pile back into my regular pile. Um, so that was the initial. And so about February of, you know, once we almost were a full year into COVID. So February, I was like, had gotten all of my stuff being virtual learning at school kind of settled and my lessons were set. And I was like, okay, I need something to kind of use to get myself relaxed and to refocus. So I'm like, pulled out this book. Like, this is going to be what I focus on. This is going to be how I get my Zen back. So, and I smartly this time started with the first pattern and worked my way through. And there were 76 different patterns in that book. And I made a goal that I wanted to make all 76 and take a picture of all of them. And then I would be done. And so there's the picture of all of them. Uh, right there in front of you. So I, and they're actually kind of from the far left of the screen as you're working towards the egg shaped ones in the middle. So you're kind of seeing chronologically how they actually group because they went from the different types of centers, which I'll talk about in a minute, to the different more complex. And then you can also do Tamari on different sizes. So you see two that are eggs. So they're a little bit more challenging, especially to wrap but it doesn't have to always be a ball shape. There's some that are done on, on more, you know, alternate shapes as well. So this was my success. And I was very proud that I actually had finally gotten it. And now it's fun because I was posting them on Facebook. And so now I get to see, oh, how quickly I worked through. Because it, honestly, I started about the second week of February and I was done through all 76 by the middle of November. And I was shocked that I managed to get through them all in under a year because I was, you know, figuring it wasn't going to be, you know, that quickly. But, you know, follow the book and learn the easy ones first before you jump to the complex ones. And it works a little easier, I found. So and so we're going to actually work with one of those simpler versions today with our pattern and hopefully we'll all get that same kind of success. So the basics for just starting this. So if you're like, oh, do I want to do this? These would be the minimum things you'd need. So you need that dense styrofoam ball. The book I went through started, a, the majority of them were on a three inch. I did them all on three inch. So even if it said it was four or whatnot, I did it on three inch. It was easier to buy. Um, and that way I could get a big package of them and I got them through Amazon and there'll be a slide up here that'll give you links so I can share this with Steph if she posts it or whatnot or can get it out to you. So it can give you links or if you need it and you want, you can email, you know, get a hold of me and I can just share you this slideshow too. So you need the cotton sewing thread, which like I said earlier, is just regular sewing thread. It could be a machine sewing thread. Most of the little spools are about the 350, 400 yards you need. Uh, if you're gonna end up doing a lot, then you might wanna go on and get some that are made for you know more industrial, you get bigger and they're cheaper. Like I got this, that was 5,000. This has been around for a couple of months now, uh, but it was about 5,000 yards and it was only about $7 from Amazon. So it does pay you to get some of the different sizes. You can get really good assortments of colors for a lot cheaper on Amazon too. So you get some variety of colors as well. So there are different ways you could do it, but most of the materials I've bought have come through Amazon and just gotten the variety and had fun with playing with the different colors. Crochet thread, um, I get, you can get the big spool, but I get assorted ones. And so they're little minis, um, but these will do three or four or five, depending on how many Tamari details you're doing. So I can get a lot of them out of just a small spool. Also depends on how much of a color. Um, but there, as Steph was asking earlier, how many colors? There's no right or wrong. So it's kind of how what colors you want to put together. 
how you want to do your design. You can do thin stripes, thick stripes, one stripe, multiple stripes. So that's the fun part about these. Once you learn them, there's a lot of way you can tweak even a single pattern. Uh, so you can get, even you're using the same pattern, you're going to get a lot of variety just by changing the amount of times you go around, the amount of different colors, putting a little shimmer sparkle into one. I'll show, oh, I forgot to grab that. I'll be grab that in the other room. Um, but show you some of the metallics that I can use. Uh, eight is a little thicker. Eight crochet thread is a little thicker. So if you want to fill a ball or if you're doing a larger size, the larger will help fill that design a little faster. Embroidery needles, whatever you're comfortable with. So, I mean, whatever you're happy with sewing, you do want more embroidery, not a yarn needle, because it'll be a heck of a thing to get through the layers of the, the sewing. Um, quilt sewing pins. So I get the ones that have just the little colorful head on the top. And that way you can help, it helps plot the different designs. You can go color by color. You can use them for measuring. Um, and then a strip of paper. And this was the, the geometry thing that I think is so fun of how you measure and plot. So you could use an actual sewing ruler. So, I mean, that has, you know, what the measurements on, but it teaches the book I went through, taught you how to use it and do every, the, all the kinds of plots with a piece of paper and then match. So it's an easy way. And I'll show you how, when we get the ball wrapped, what that is. So um, if you use this or if, if this is shared out or you email me and want it, all of these are hot linked right to, you know, this thing on Amazon. So these are, you know, when I was doing, I did this. So Steph found me from a friend of a friend, like she said, uh, my regional president in my part of Virginia had me do a, a spring workshop a couple of weeks ago. And so I bought all this stuff and brought it to the workshop. And so then they could pick and choose. And then they were posting, and that's how Steph saw what we were doing and asked if I would come in online and teach you guys. So, but this I gave them, so it has all hot links and, and access to all the different things. But, you know, simple things on Amazon. I got all of this stuff for a group that would have, I taught, could teach to 20 people, and it was like less than 50 bucks. So, I mean, it, it's not a big expense to start. So if you're really interested in the fiber work. Can I uh, have your permission to post your email in the chat, Scott? Sure, yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Um, so I worked through the book um, and then after doing the book and kind of going through, I found a lot of online resources too. I you know, love searching through Pinterest and just hitting Tamari and seeing all the different you know patterns that pop up of other people and now that I've gone through the book and I kind of know I actually plot visuals just by looking at a photo of them it's like oh that's a two center or that's a five center or, you know figuring out the centers and how many spokes and how many divisions it needs to be just from that but there's a, these two great spots online uh, Tamari Kai is one and then JapaneseTamari.com they have patterns they give you a lot of the actual you know specific vocabulary for the different kinds of stitches so if you didn't want to have to purchase a book, I mean, there's several different books out, but I mean, you could easily hop online. There are YouTube channels that will go through with some of them. So uh, there's a lot of, you know, resources out there if you wanted to get further into the design work. Uh, so those are two that I've found really good. There's a Facebook page on Tamari that I started following and I'll post. Um, so, and it's neat to see the community built there about people sharing and, and giving advice to people starting out or, you know, showing the new designs that someone's coming or working with or looking for. So. All right, so in the book that I went through, it divided the book, um, this book called the Tamari book uh, by the amount of centers. So you kind of think of it like the North Pole, South Pole. So that would be the two centers that you're seeing on the far. And then there's some that are four centers. So you would have like a North Pole and then, you know, three on the other near end of the South Pole. Uh, then you have six centers where they kind of go North Pole, South Pole, and then space four around what they say is the equator or the OB. So you can, when you're going around the center part, um, that's the OB. Or in other books, sometimes they call it the equator. It, can be eight, it had eight centers. And then it all went up to 12. That's just beginning because you can go into the hundreds and hundreds of centers. I'll show you some of them in a minute. I have not gone much higher than 12. I've gotten a couple 
fit more than that, but they get, you need the larger ball for that simply because of the surface area. So a three inch of 12, a little bit higher than 12 is comfortable, but if you're really wanting to dive into the, you know, hundred centers and whatnot, you're going to need a much larger ball. And I say that because it was interesting is as I was learning this, this woman's work popped up on like one of those viral art pages. So she was a 92 year old grandmother who was like right around, you know, COVID time. And these were her tamari. And so she became this little internet sensation for a while of all of the tamari that she did. So you can see all of the multiple patterns and all of the, you know, repetition of color and design to cover a different size ball and they're gorgeous. And so some of them are stitched and you're seeing the base. Some of them are literally completely wrapped. The one that's right below her face. You can see how there you don't, you're not seeing the baseline, the base layer of the stitching. So all of that is the, the like the crochet thread or the color thread that she would have wrapped over it to create the different layer patterns. So there are some that are just absolutely stunning. Um, and these were posted, I, I forget what social media site her granddaughter posted them and got her, you know, Grandma became famous because the granddaughter was at showing off her, her grandmother's work, which I thought was really cute. Um, but they are stunning pieces. My mind is. <laughs> yeah. we'll go back to that one in a little bit when we get started. But so, I mean, I've just done a couple with themes, you know, so we can, you know, you're looking in so you can see. So there's lots of different patterns. You can have different amounts to divide them up. So um, if you're also seeing, I can show them a little closer. If you're looking at the other pin video where it's underneath and you're seeing my hands, you probably seem a little better than looking at them right in front of my face. Wow. And there's those. Um, actually, I'll share some of the ones that I was doing that I'm going to show. A friend of mine, my librarian friend who just retired was thrift shopping and she found this birdcage. She's like, this would be perfect to put some of yours in. It actually is. I spray painted it. It's got all the different ones in and it hangs from a hook in my room but you can you know have all different kinds of patterns i had fun i found a variegated thread so i did some where the thread underneath is multicolored, and then so i just did neutral colors on top when i posted and shared about them everyone was saying how they gave it a graffiti vibe and so they had seen you know not seen it in that kind of style uh let's see we got here's one of the eggs so you could see the egg design. So a couple of them in my, as I was learning, the thread to kind of do the plotting, you can save. But once you start doing it, you can actually make that a sacrificial thread. So in some of the later ones, I'm actually cutting out where you're seeing this silver line. That's what my base was to kind of stitch around. But you can, if you stitch through enough of the layers of the original wrapping, you can actually cut that off. And then when everyone looks at it, they're like, I have no idea how you're managing to keep it, everything on. So this one you see, I did cut off all of those guidelines because you're just left with the designs. So it's a neat way, you know, once you get it started, you can go through and catch all the different layers and then remove all the math uh, to hide it. And then people really have no idea how you put it together. So we're going to do one that's called in the book it said the poly star so it was like how many stars and so i'm gonna you know start with the the two center we're gonna find out how to plot our ball uh the mari so that you can get the north hemisphere the north and the south pole and so you'll have a design and they can match or they can be different north and different south uh and then you you basically will wrap the center where the um equator is or you can leave it plain so a lot of options that you can do with these have you done these with students like no kids? i have not because i teach elementary uh -huh. so i have not done this with students i do a lot of stitching to begin with but it's enough getting my students at the elementary level to stitch regular stitches on a piece of flat burlap Okay. So, <laughs> I have a couple of high school teachers who went to the class and they could said they could see, you know, in some of their classes getting into this, especially if you had a little bit more advanced or you had a, a program that was a little bit more fiber focused. Right. I mean, you can, you can easily start. I, you know, one of these will take you probably once you get it wrapped anywhere from depending on the amount of color changes and back and forth from three to six hours. So, I mean, it could technically be done over a, a few days within students, 
So if that's an interest, I mean, that definitely could be something applicable. Okay. Um, with this design, you're basically doing a herringbone stitch. And so I kind of put that in the bottom. The one that's pictured under Polystar, the red and blue one, was from the book. So the purple and green and turquoise one to the set left of that, that was my first Tamari. So that was the actual first one I did. Um, so you can see how the kind of centers are a little uneven and whatnot. Uh, that was done with embroidery floss. So like I said, you can use embroidery floss for them. So, you know, the first couple I did use embroidery floss and it looks just as fine. It's just a little flatter and wider in thread. So you may not need to do as many times around to cover, or you just may not have as, as many spaces to do different colors. So that's Excuse the only reason. Really yeah. For the embroidery thread, did you use all the threads or did you separate them so that you I, didn't have? I did when I first did it. So that's, a, that's the full six threads. I mean, if you wanted to split it, it would be a little thinner. But since I had no concept as to what really it would look like, you know, I was like, well, I'll try it whole and see how it looks. And it wasn't bad. It just, you know, kept me from having to go around as often. But I mean, if you only wanted to use embroidery floss, then split it and you might want to do, I would say three, three strands of embroidery floss are very close to the five, number five for a shape red. So you just have to make sure that they don't unravel on you too much. Keep them twisted. All right. So you can see the group better. Are we happy of round? Are we good if I kind of get started? I know you're recording, so you could easily go back and watch. Yeah, whenever you're okay. ready. All right. So I'm going to kind of switch. If you have, I think there's two pinned, but if you want to unpin me, you know, and look, stop looking at my face, and you can look at the video of the hand, and that way it'll be a little closer and easier for you to kind of see what to do as you're looking down at your Mari. So, can you see what uh, that your hands are pinned? Yes, I saw it. I just didn't know if the, if they were you know how it was coming up on their screen. So if it was one hole, because they could easily they'll hear me, but they don't. If they wanted a little bigger so they could see, they could unpin my face. Okay. So the strip of paper is how I learned to do all of the measuring and how you divide it up. And so once you have the ball wrapped, kind of take your strip of paper. You want to make sure that it would go all the way around. So a three-inch core, if you took a piece of computer paper or whatever um, and cut a thin strip, you know, it should wrap and have a little bit extra, and that's fine. So you have that little overlap. I kind of always have taken after the first couple and realized I ripped through when I pinned it. So I kind of always fold the end over a tiny bit to make it a little thicker. And you're basically putting your pin in. And you're just sticking it anywhere into the ball. Makes no difference where. Because wherever you put the pin is going to be your north or south pole. Okay. So now, with that strip, you're going to wrap it all the way around. And you're going to fold the other end so that the fold is touching where the pin is. And so that gives you the circumference layer. I'll kind of see if you can angle it so you can see how I just folded that paper and made it touch right to where the needle or the pin came out. And so that gives me the circumference of the Mari. Now, to get to the opposite end, to figure out how do I get, so I've got the North Pole, how do I get the South Pole lined up? You take it and you're going to bend it backwards and make it come to the pin again. And then you're squeezing the paper until you make a fold at the other end. And so that's now halfway. So now when I wrap it back, that spot is going to be the halfway point. Now to help make sure that you get it even, you kind of take this strip and you kind of go around. And so if there's a gap, or if your paper kind of touches it and folds up, you know you need to move the pin slightly. Is it going to be an exact? No. But does it have to be an exact? No. So that's the way that you can kind of check. And you're going around to see to get your other pole. 
So now I've got the North Pole and the South Pole. You can pin them the same color. You can pin them different colors. It really does not matter. Um, so. so I've got two pins. So since we're going to do what's called a two center, so one of our designs will go around each of these pins. So now we need to figure out where the equator line is that's going to divide the Mari in half. And the way we do that, so I go back to how I split the paper so I made the half. And then I'm going to take this fold and bring the fold back to the pin and make a new crease. And so that gives me where the equator is. So I can use pins and Move them. I usually most of the designs that you know they kind of go in quadrants, you know, in of four. So if I kind of move this around to kind of pin four pins, it'll help me when I do the division from my points. But if they're not perfect, you're gonna see how you can adjust the can you show the equator it. part again? Say it again. Can you repeat the equator direction sure. again? Yeah, so when I originally did the fold defined to the other pole, so I just keep the paper folded in half, and then I take the fold back to the pin, and I make a new crease. And then that becomes where the equator is when I wrap that back down to the ball. Is there any way to make your screen, your hands, bigger? All I'm seeing is the um, the presentation. Oh, oh! I can well, yeah. see what you're doing. You want to unshare or stop sharing? I can. Yeah, forgot about that. I'm Google Meet, so I'm just it's, when she said Zoom, I'm like I got to get used to Zoom again because I haven't done Zoom in so long. So sorry about that. I will. How about I spot you can there? Is that better? So yes, so but I missed all the steps. In fourth still. <laughs> No, I couldn't I that, is that is that screen bigger for you guys? Can you see it? It's it's bigger, but I missed all the steps. I don't know how I did all that. Let again, real quick. Not a problem. Thank you. Is the paper in fourths now? Is the paper what? In fourths. In fourths. Yes, yeah. the paper is in fourths okay. to get to the equator. Yep. Okay. So those of you who need a little closer, so I took I pinned the first. I did the wrap to go around. And then I made the crease so it touched that pin. And then I took that piece and I went back and I put a crease in to put that fold in half. And then that gave me the spot for the other half, the other pole. And I could just move this paper around, making sure that that pin kind of all always was even as I was hitting the paper in the different spots. And that gets it close enough to that south pole. Then when I need to find the equator or the OB, then I took that folded piece and I went back to that first pin and I made a new crease. And then when I press that against the bari, then I'm getting where the halfway point between those two poles, so that would be the equator. And I can then move that around and I just put a pin at the bottom of that. And I like to do four. We're gonna end up with eight pins around for the measurement we're gonna do. So hopefully that helps. Thank you for cluing me in about the presentation and making it easier for you to see. Is everybody Thanks good so now much. with the with the size of the screen? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, sure. good. All right, so once you get that, then the weird, the odd thing is you gotta pull this out, but you wanna have a pin to replace. Because you want to have a marker for your pole, but you need to be able to remove the paper. So I kind of have the new pin ready. And as I'm sliding out the one with the paper, I just put a pin right back in. Because I'll need to use the paper to kind of make some marks to help me do the measurements. So now I have the Mari. I've got the equator marked a few times. I've got both poles. And I just took out the pin of the folded piece. So we are gonna do one similar to these. So I actually just finished these over the past like two weeks, kind of with my end of year. 
And I thought I had taken black and white thread and wrapped them on the Mari simultaneously and it looked silvery. And I thought, oh, what can I do with these? So I decided I did one of every one of the primary and secondary colors and then did a tint and shade of each and did the patterns in verse. So this is the design I'm gonna teach you. So you could see how one of the stars, so there's four points of one part of the star and then there's a second star that's in a different pattern that's also four points. That's what it means by poly star, multiple star. So we did the four points of one star. I'm gonna show you how on the paper we make the marks to make the points for the other star. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing. And then when I've said earlier about wrapping an OB, you know, there's an OB or the equator line to go around it, or some people don't do that at all and they leave it plain. And that's literally, I just stitch under and I wrap it and I stitch back into the thread. So it's a very easy way to give it a kind of in between a middle space. All right, so how do we do that? So I'm gonna take this page with it folded into its fourths and I'm gonna make one more fold and just kind of line up that crease to where your pinhole was. You're not gonna go if you creased it. You so say you wanna line up the edge that you're folding over to where your pinhole was. So now you've got eighths. And so with your scissors along one edge, you're just gonna cut a little triangle corner off of one of the folds. So I took off that and then wherever my pin was, I kind of cut down towards where the pin is coming out and then make a second little Triangle cut. Both on the same edge. Both on the same edge. Okay. So when I open it, I've now created the map that divides the eight marks I'm going to need without having to measure. So that's why I said it was really cool. You could do measuring with the rulers, but the way that that book kind of worked it through, I can do all the measurements just by simply folding the paper. And then if I want to do other marks to figure out, I can then use a pencil or a marker or something and actually mark the paper so that when I'm plotting things around, I can use the paper still as well. So it's a neat, simple way to kind of get around to that map. Okay. All right. So I have, take this paper, and now here's how we can see how well we lined it up. So I have, I'm hooking it around one of the ones that went around the equator. And then I'm moving it. And so when I see, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little, so that it's easier for you to see. I'm gonna put a little Sharpie since I did white on white, which I probably shouldn't have done. Scott, could you fold yours back up and just show us the, where those cuts are made again? Absolutely. Thank you. So if I had it in half, and so then I, that's how I took it off the, ball when I was making the equator. So then I took the fold and I brought it one more in. And then I cut off the corner where all the folds were. And so this little ledge is pointing down to where my pinhole was. So that's the pinhole. Put a mark where my pinhole is. So that black dot is where my pinhole was. So you can see how that other triangle went down so that the corner's pointing at the pin. So if our pins do not match the cuts, should we adjust it to the cuts? That's what we're gonna do. So now when I go back to do my measurements, so I'm gonna hook that to one of the hemisphere pins. And now as I move, I can see, oh, that didn't come in. So I just shift this over. So it nestles in that V. And then I can move the next one and see, oh, I really got that one off. So I shift this one over so it nestles in the V. Well, that one actually lined up pretty well. Sometimes you get lucky. And then the last one should go overlap right over the initial. So now you see how I have the empty Vs. So that would be another polystar. So I like doing the in-between ones, a different color of pin. It just helps me visually see when I'm gonna change, it really doesn't matter. I'm just horribly type A and color code things. It, you can keep track. I mean, you're gonna see the angles you can make. So it really makes no difference what color the bins are. 
But so then that gives me, I'll have eight pins around and now they're evenly spaced. So I have a North pole, a South pole, and then eight around the equator. Okay. Do we drop the paper now? Yep, we can keep the paper near you because you can use it to plot some of the other points. But now we've got the basic, so we can divide it. So now you'll need either a different color of sewing thread, or you can easily use embroidery floss or um, your crochet thread to do the plotting. So I'm just, I purposely wrapped, so I'm going to do mine with black, so it's easier for you to see. So now we're going to put the guidelines across these pins that will help me start the framework. So this is like building the skeleton for the design that I'm going to stitch over it. So. Will you give us a moment to catch up? Absolutely. Please. <laughs> I feel like my whole thing is wonky. My north and south are not lined up. Well, if you were putting it on the side and you kind of look and they see, then just move it. Like I said, it's not going to be an exact. And if you think it kind of got off a little bit, my first couple were wonky. I'll be honest, as I was learning how to do it. So, I mean, you we're art people. We can look and see, oh, that's really not, you know, just need to adjust it and adjust it. It's not going to be, with it being two centers, it's not as critical if they're perfectly lined up as you're getting used to doing the math because it's going to be you're going to see one design you're going to see the other design or you'll see them on the side so it's not you've got plenty of space even if it's not perfectly across from each other okay all right here's another stupid question well maybe perfect, not too stupid perfect. what happens if my thread my base thread is coming loose uh, I got happens. that happening too. Yeah, I just kind of like pull it so that it wraps over. By the time you start stitching over it, it's going to hold it back in place. So, or if it gets Don't too big of a deal, it. yeah, or if it gets too big of a deal, you can always cut where it's loose and then just put the ends that you cut back through the the other layers like you did when you ended it originally. Okay, so it's not that big a deal. No, not at all. Most of the time, as you get the other designs over top, if you just stretch it. Like you can pull it so it goes over a pin to keep it from wiggling too much. As you do the stitching over of the pattern, it'll hide it and it'll hold it in place. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we good for me to show you how to start doing the thread? Oh, one second. Okay. Yeah. Don't anyone get a lot of you Can you imagine trying to do, I did this with a book and myself. So, I mean, yes, I was doing <laughs> something. I like kind of started and like, doesn't look right. And I chopped all of it off and I tried reading the book again. I'm like, so yeah, the first one, it can be a hot mess. But even that first one, you know, once you get through it, it's like, well, it's really not that bad when I get a stitch. It kind of looks fun. Okay. Steph, can you hear me? Yes. Can you see me? No. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I have a question. Wait, yes, I can see you. You just weren't on my screen. What's oh, up? I'm still wrapping the ball. How do you know when to stop? <laughs> when you can't see the white ball anymore. I can't see it, but I have a lot of thread left on the 250-yard uh, ball that I got. Just thread it through and end it. You don't need to make a huge, as long as the white ball, right, Russ, yeah. is, is covered, then as you're good. You can't see it. You should be fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I think we had another question. What were the original inner guts of the Tamari? Oh, hi, Laura. The It's a hard styrofoam three-inch ball. Well, for what we're doing, if she's talking historically, it was all like herbs and you know, leather and whatnot originally. So I'm not sure which one she was meaning. So, oh. And and then originally in the history, then it went from the leather and the herbs that they were using for the sport kind of equipment ball into just the silks left over from kimonos wrapped tightly. Yeah, she said historically. Yeah. And you said you would share this presentation with us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And I, I put Russ's email in in the um, in the chat, you guys. So if you want to scroll up and grab it. So what are we doing now? I All think right. I've caught up now. I don't know about other people, but so now we're gonna put, like I said, we're gonna put the skeleton lines that we're gonna use to do the stitching over. So that gives us that reference point. What are so we you, using for that? So oh. that's what I said. You can use a sewing thread that's a different color. You can use some of the embroidery or the embroidery floss or crochet thread. It really doesn't matter. I actually, the book told me when I was learning to get kind of a metallic, and that's why it said you don't have to cut it off because it gives a little shimmer. So I literally have spools from starting because these were giant. Um, but yeah, so and you can use any kind of thing, but you definitely want for you to start to be able to see it clearly. So pick a color that's definitely different than your base color thread. It could be a color you want to use in the design, or it could be a con completely contrasting color. So that's up to you, whatever's easiest for you to see. I picked black just because it's a good contrast so you see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick one of the poles, doesn't matter, north or south, and I'm going to poke in and pass the pole. Okay. And so I haven't cut it. It's still attached to the spool so because it makes it easier to wrap. I mean, when I read the book, it said, oh, you can wrap it eight times around it, and then and you really don't need to wrap it. You can just leave it on the spool or leave it on the piece, and you can work from it from there. So once I've gone through, you can see how the part, the end of the, is away from the middle. So the part that's still attached to the spool is coming out where that pin is. So I'm just going to put a little knot at the end of the thread, or two knots if you're afraid it's going to pull through your layers of stitch. And then just back it in so that that knot goes under the thread. Okay, to be clear, we're not going into the ball. We're just sliding it under the thread. Yeah, you're not going into the ball. You're sliding into the layer of all the wrapping. Okay. And then where's the, we take the needle off and just yep. make a knot. It through and then I just tied a knot at the end and pulled the knot back in so that it was under the sewing thread. And it looks like the thread is coming out at the point of the needle. Okay. And this is at the North Pole? Doesn't matter, North or South. Really makes okay. no difference because it's going to look the same at both poles. How in the world did you figure this out just by looking in the book? The book that I have is really good with diagrams. Oh, so, nice. I mean, it really is. So, uh, let's see. I don't know. Hey, I found potato? that book also. Yeah. I found the same book. Awesome. Pork so, or chicken or something. Here, you can pork. see on the book. So here was you know, learning how to do the paper folding. And then learning about what? how to plot the pins around. No. And then here it was talking. So it gave, you know, if I was doing two centers with six spokes or two centers with eight spokes. So it really did a good job visually. So, I mean, if you want a book and you really want something in front of you that you can go back to, this was a really good book. So now, one knot is good, one knot is good enough to hold it. One knot, it just depends on how tightly you dense. If if it pulls through and it yanks out, just do it again and make the knot a little bigger. Okay. It just depends. Like I just yanked mine out. So I mean I need to make mine out a little bigger. All depends on how tightly you do your stitching or how deep you get it into your threads when you pull it through. Okay. As I, when I teach stitching to my students and I start teaching sewing to second graders and we do the whole practicing the knot tying and I always say, I'm like, you know, this is the easiest thing. If you make a mistake with sewing, you either pull out a stitch or you take scissors and you cut it off and you start over. 
And so it's not one of those things that you need to get upset over. So the same kind of thing here. If this yarn pulls, the thread pulls out, you just put it back on the needle, thread it over again. Okay. All right. So now what I'm doing, so I'll give you a chance to watch first. And then, because this is pretty, you know, you're, you're repeating over and over. So when I'm coming out the one, one pole, then I'm going to put the needle down next to one of the threads at the, or needles at the equator, go to the opposite pole, wrap around to the other pin on the other side of the equator, and then back to where I begin. And then I turn that thread slightly to go to the next pin on the equator, and then to the next pole, and then to the pin on the opposite side of the equator, and then back to where I started. And then I turn it slightly again to go to the next pin on the equator, to the next pole, to the opposite pin on the equator, back to where I started. And then I turn it again, go to the last pin on the equator on that side, back to the other pole, back to the opposite equator, and back to where I started. So it looks like I've got the eight sections. So you're gonna see eight lines coming from your pole at the North Pole and at the South Pole. And then on the equator, you're having the thread by each one of the pins. So when you get back to where you started, just cut enough string away from your piece and thread it on and go back through the layer of wrapping, however long you need to. And this gives us the skeleton that we're gonna use to stitch around to get all of our design open. So I just stitch back through, pull it back through, and now it's all completely wrapped around. Stitch back through. Stitch back through back to where I started. So the North Pole or South Pole, whichever one it was. Yeah. Stitch back through, all the points come together. Go back under the threads so it comes out the side. And then I just trim off the extra. And if you still see some of these right now, it's perfectly fine. You can always trim them when you're done. But that gives us the frame for starting. Once you have that, find your strip of paper again. That's going to help us plot the beginning points and the end points for our star. Okay. So on this finished blue one, I'm going to kind of stick a yellow pin where that hemisphere pin would, or the north or south pole pin would have been. So there it is would be in the middle. And so you see how my blue stitches are a little bit away from that. Okay. And then when I come down to where the equator was, so like that would have been the equator, how the pin, the arrow points to where that line would be. And so I will have a little marker at the top of where that V is, and then I build it away. So we're going to place pins in a moment that are going to be where the top of that star. So see, this one is the equator or the North, or North Pole. I'm going to place a pin where that star starts. And then I'm going to be placing another pin where the star is going to come down and go around for the next one. So it's going to look like I have a couple of pins down each side. So then this would be the equator. So that's the equator. That's my pole. And then I'll have two more pins in between to help me give me my guide points. So I'm sorry, I was typing. I missed that. So we're adding... Yep, I was just showing you what it would look like on a finished one. 
Okay. And now that's how we do it because there's no right or wrong way to put it. Okay. That's the so if I'm starting with, I go back to that paper and hook it back onto the pole, then I can say, okay, I want my first one to be that far away. And I want my next one to be, I'm going to actually use the little corner edge of the, the V cut. So, and that's where I'm going to plot. So I can put a pin at the top and I can put a pin at the bottom. And if you're like me and you want to go color to color, then you're going to have two different colors and you'll alternate them. So like, see how I did yellow at the top and blue. So then when I do the next spoke, since it would be the opposite set, I would do blue at the top and then yellow. But again, it makes no difference what color pins you put where. Just if you're horribly type A like me, you like color coding. So are we, we're marking these on the paper? You can, so that way they're even. So that way when you go around to each spoke, the pins are in the same spot. So that's why if you're seeing where I'm pointing, I pointed to a pencil line that I drew on the paper where I want the top pin to be the start of the star. And then I put another pencil line where I want the bottom point to start. And then it's gonna go beyond towards the pole or towards the equator. So. We're just so marking the size of our points. Is that what this is? So it's the spacing, how far away you want to be from your north or south pole. Uh huh. And then how far away, so like the space from the equator. So I put a pin here to make this V. So you can see this space between that pin and the equator leaves the room for my stitching. So how many things do we need going around? So I would put two pins on each of your spokes. So you'll need 16. And two if you think that you're not worried our, about the... Hmm? You're saying two pins on each of our spokes. Yep. Because we're only one, one before the equator or just one before the equator, one after the equator. So I've got my pole and then I've got two pins and then I've got my equator. So before the okay. equator. So they're all in the northern hemisphere. Exactly. Right. And the nice part is you learn one hemisphere and you're doing the other hemisphere the exact same way later on. And if they don't match or one looks better than the other, then you put a loop at the one that looks good and then you hang it as an ornament. And so you see the good side <laughs> and let the other side be the bottom. Yeah. Or you do both hemispheres completely opposite. So you do a different color scheme on each end and then they're not supposed to look alike. So that's the fun part. That's why I said there's really, you know, even if you kind of get the, the measurements a little off, it's not going to matter. So it's not going to matter because each one is a little different. And that's what gives you the variety by changing the distances. So I could make very precise measurements or I could not. Sometimes you just eyeball them. And so I've got all the pins around. <clears throat> start pushing them in because it will save me from getting them caught when I start stitching. So they should be pushed all the way in? You can, yeah. I mean, sometimes if I can't get my needle around them, I'll slide one back out a little bit so I get my needle. But you know, if they're all the way pushed in, it'll keep you from, as you stitch, getting the thread caught on each one as you work your way around. Okay. 
once you have that, then you can have fun starting to choose your colors. So if you get them pinned, figure out what color you want. And as I say to my students, I cut an arm length because then you won't get tangled. We're just doing the top half, right? Not the bottom. Yes. I mean, you when you start doing them, if you get used to them, you could absolutely pin both sides, but there's no reason for us to pin the other side right now because I'll teach you the first half. And like I said, you can repeat it. Or if you're like, I'm good with one half and leave the other one plain, that's fine too. Thank you. You just tuck the end of your rib threads when you finish making the guys. I missed it. So when I went back to the beginning, yes, I just kind of tucked that last thread. This is why you're seeing these two black threads. So one was where I tied the knot and started, and the other one is where I ended touching around the rib threads and I came out. So if you see, so like I have two, I mean, they could be out at the same, exact same spot if you wanted, but I did them in two spots so you would see them. So then when, like I said, when you're done those, Skeleton, ribs, whatever you want to call them. Thread your needle with your color, put a knot at the one end, and then you'll be ready to go. Give us a few minutes to kind of catch up for pinning and getting your color started. Because well, honestly, that took the longest. Once you start doing the stitching, it's basically you're repeating it over and over and over again until you like the color pattern. That's why I picked this poly star because it's just a repetitious stitch. It's a herringbone. And you can do it as few times around or as many times around as you want. In as many colors or a single color as you would like. Are we starting, a, a, compared to the one you just put down, are we starting with the lightest blue or the darkest blue? So that's what it does not matter. So where you see, so we're doing two stars. So we're going to do a four-pointed star. And then we'll do another four-pointed star now. I mean, you could do literally one whole star and then the second whole star over top. What I did with this one is I did the dark blue layer first, and then I did the light blue layer of the next one, and then I went back and did the medium blue and the medium blue so that they overlapped. But that's just a design thing. I mean, I you could easily do one whole four-pointed star, get that one done, and then shift and do the other one the exact same color, and it would all match. So it does not have to alternate color like this one did. I'm just showing you options. So that's the fun part about these. You can get as intricate or as simple with the color combos as you would like. Okay. When we're um, getting our thread ready for the next mm -hmm. thing, are you yep. cutting it off of that? About how yes. long are you cutting it? I say cut about an arm length. Okay. Because then it's like you won't get it too tangled. If you do okay. that, if you've done any kind of embroidery before, I mean, it's just it's with this, this layer of stitching, it's simple enough. If I run out, I just stitch it under and I cut a new piece and tie a knot. Okay. And pick up where I left off. Okay. Yep. So this Thank is you. this is easy to if, depending on how long or how short. I have a bag of all the little ends so that when I like do a flower one, I use all my little ends or things for different elements. So the, actually, let me go back to sharing while you're finishing pins, and then I can talk about this herringbone stitch. So you can kind of see what we're doing. So you can see how in this, where it says figure 2B, I kind of drew things over it. So I wrote this little circle and put pin, and then it has like the A at the top. And you can see how I'm stitching and it goes under the pin and then over to the next one. And I'm kind of going backwards. You see the direction that the pin is pointing and then it'll cross over. So if you look at the figure 2C, you can see how the layers, as we do more of them, they kind of cross over each other. That's where you get the herringbone design. So you're going under these rib stitches and then as you do the next one you'll be going over top of them as you go to the next stitch and i'll demonstrate that for you but that was the one part that when i was doing it live a couple people missed 
So I figured, oh, let me put these images a little bit closer and a little bit larger so that we can draw attention to them. And then I'll make sure that I show them a little bit better when I'm doing this stitching for you. So when I start, again, it makes no difference which one you start at. So I can start at any one of these close to the, the pole. I'm going to stitch under the threads and come out on what it says is the left side of the rib. And then when I pull that through, so give me, if you watch this and then I can repeat it when I do the next, like I'll show you the two steps and then it just keeps repeating. So I start by going under and I'm pulling that all the way so that that knot goes underneath. And so now I came out, so I, this is why I did matching colors. So I'm going from the blue pin down to the next blue pin. So I come and I cross over the rib. And just like figure two showed us, I'm going back. So now that that thread is going under the rib again, Of course you're not. Hang on. <laughs> I need to get that a little closer to me so I can get that on it. There we go. All right. So I'm pulling until I'm all the way tight. And then it's again. So it came out on the left side of the rib. So now it's going to cross over and under the pin and go up to the next one. And it goes in on the right side and comes out on the left side of the rib. And you can see how it's just going to be triangle points. Long thread. This one likes not. Okay. So now it's out on the left side. I cross over above that pin. Come back down to the other pin. Start on the right side, go under, come out the left. And I go back up over top of the top one. Start on the right side, come out the left. And I'm doing this much more upside down for you. I turned the ball so I'm comfortable. You don't have to hold it in this weird, but I want you to see it kind of in the same direction which is probably why I keep getting all the knots. And then back down, go in on the right side, under the rib, come out on the left side. Back up to the top, go in on the right side of the pin, under the rib, come out on the left side. Keep going around until I get back to the beginning. So you will see that you've ended up with a four-pointed star in whatever color you have chosen. You can go back the same way. What do you mean go back the same way? So where I went and ended, so where I went we got back to the bidding, so I'm going yeah. this I was going. So I'm going in on the right, so it's right next to where that other thread was. Right. And I come out on the left so it finishes that last point of the star. And that gets me ready for the next row. Okay. So 
so we can go around as many times as we want yep. for the thickness, so, the thickness of the stripes. Right. So what ha what's happening now at the middle when I come around, this next row is going to kind of squeeze these two together into a point. That's what makes this point change in size. When I get to the end down by the equator, it's not squeezing, it's just adding a layer on top. So when I do the second row, so I went under, when I went over, I went under that last thread. I'm pulling down so that they're side by side. I'm coming down to the point and I'm going back in on the right and under, out on the left. Sorry for all of these. hindering our progress. So we want to, okay. I get that we want the threads right next to each other. Mm -hmm. We want the needle to come out next to the first thread that came out before. Yes, so uh, I'll show you. So where I came, when I ended, I went back under yeah and see how if i'm doing this it's going around and so this when i bring it around it's going to literally wrap over top of that line of that right so when i came around so now these are side by side and then when i go back to the point then i'm coming back up and they're staying side by side so now when i go under the rib i'm going under that first line of the star and under the second line of the star on the left so that now this new stitch is going under the point from that star from the first time around. And as it comes around, it kind of squeezes together as I pull it tight. And then I go back around. So it's only overlapping going over top of the stitches at the top near the pole. It is not overlapping at the bottom of the star. It's just going further and further down towards the equator. Um, okay. So there's the end of the equator. I bring it up. It's now crossing over that first star. So I'm going to go under the thread, under the rib, under the other thread. And then when I go back down, it's overlapped all of them and it's pulling them into a point. And it takes it a couple rounds until you really start seeing how they're squeezing together. So now I just went around a second time. And so now I do the same thing going under the two stitches of the star and the rib. And now I can make a third round. And this is where I said you can do as many rounds of a color as you want. You can change the color after you do so many rounds. It's really your preference. That's the fun part about these is because there's no specific design you have to follow. If I was doing this design on a bigger ball, then I would probably do more rounds to make a thicker line to fill the space. If it was on a smaller ball, I would probably do less so that I could do more color pattern or I could just do continue to go around with one color, just getting used to the stitch and doing a single color and it looks just as good. So if you like, I'm not quite getting it and I wanna just keep going with the same color, stay with the same color. If we hypothetically cut our guidelines, mm -hmm. would they would our stars fall apart or no? Because that's why I said if you're going through the actual stitched part of the ball, 
Like when I started, I didn't read it close and I was only going right under this rib here, if you could see on the video. So I would do the needle just under the rib. And then yes, if it breaks, it's gonna be a problem because that's the only thing holding it. But if I go under the rib and through the stitchery, then the rib is sacrificial because I can break that off later because I've stitched through the layer of sewing thread and it's gonna hold in place. So yes, sometimes you have I have had it where it breaks and as long as I've gone through the sewing thread, it really makes no difference because the pin is really where my guide is. So if I'm following where the pin is, I'll be in fine. I mean, when I try to do the other half, I may need to kind of line the thread up again so I pin it in the right spot for the other half. But it really doesn't matter if that's broken as long as I'm going through the layer of the stitch. So I just went around three times to do that. I'm going to show you what to do with the next one, just so you can see it. So I could, like I said, I could, if I was going to keep doing this, I could change all the colors here and be fine. Or if I wanted them to kind of weave in and out like this one did, I don't even have to reverse the color. So I could now do, so I'm ending here. I'm not even going to cut the end. I'm going to poke this out so it comes out on the other side of the yellow head so I can start the next star. And I'll just do the same kind of up and down on the next set of four. And it's going to create an eight-pointed star. So that's why, as I said, why I picked this stitch, because it's literally the same stitch repeated over and over and over again, however many times around you want to go. Which one is the right spot? And you can do them simultaneously like I'm doing this one, and they'll weave, or you cannot do them simultaneously. And then you'll have one star, four-pointed star, on top of the other four-pointed star. Makes no difference. It's just a different design element for that stitch. Okay, so I have done I have done three. Okay. So now if I wanted to start the other star, I would go under the threads to the in-between pin. If you were going to use the same color, there's no reason to cut it. If you want to change color, then I would cut it, end it off, trim, and then get your next color. But if you're using the same color to repeat, you could literally just, as you end, stitch underneath and come out by the next set, next pin to do the next set. Okay. So it just depends on what kind of color order and combination you want to do. So if we run out of thread, it basically just starts the same way. Yep, you stitch under. And what I like doing is I leave the tail before I cut it real close. Like I'll leave the tail sticking out, thread my needle. So then I know where I need to come back in where I left off. A fun okay. little guide and then once I get the next one started then I can cut off that tail so I know where to continue going okay it's just a visual especially if you're doing the same color it's like oh where did I left that how many rounds have I gone and then you have to count real close so it's just easier to leave the tail thread your needle knot it put it under where it's supposed to start and then cut off the tail of the last one gives you a visual But then it's literally just repeating this stitch as often, as many times around as you want it to go. So like in these, the blue one and the, the colors I did, so I did four rounds of the dark and light to start, and then I did five of the middle tone, and then I went back to four rounds of the darker light. And I put a sparkle, a shimmer um, red in between each row to give it a little extra. 
So, but I mean, that's one type of design. It does not, that's why you can have all kinds of fun with it. While you're stitching, actually go, let me, because I forgot to grab, I can show you the metallic if you're really into this and what you might add for the shine. for setting my camera. So this is the metallic thread I use. I've honestly only found it really easily in Michaels. So there's two different thicknesses. This is the Grande, which is just a little thicker, and it comes on a gray spool. And then there's a thinner one on a white spool. But it has silvers and gold, and different kinds. There's a rose gold, a dark silver, a bright silver. But that works really well for giving it a little extra shine. It's a little thicker than this. This is really thin like sewing thread, but this is more almost like the crochet thread and it's about the same thickness. So, if you so see, that would be found near all the embroidery threads or sewing? In, so in my store, you have all the embroidery floss and, and the crochet threads and it's literally on the top. Okay. In spools like that. So if you wanted a little sparkle, they are more expensive. So like one spool of these is like, almost five dollars so definitely you know save your coupon get them when they're on sale or you have a good percent off it i do it depends on how much like the sparkle for this one just adding a couple rows it only used like barely a third so i mean you can get several ball you know stitching out of it, but that does add mm -hmm. the cost and you don't have to use it but if you want a little sparkle that's a good one to use Okay, so quick question. I don't know yeah. if you could see my ball. I can. I'm about to run out of thread. Uh huh. So, am I pulling the needle up where it would normally go and then so, re threading the new one? I don't, so, at so if point, I read this, at what point watch. do I cut it? You can cut it either at the top or it really makes no difference. I mean, give it enough that you're not having to like barely bend it. So if I needed to, let's say I was stitching and I ran out of thread. So I came down here. So I would just kind of stitch back towards where the stitch is so that it's coming out nearby. That way it kind of hides under my thread. See uh -huh. that? Right. So then I just pull it through and then I could cut off that end that's close. You know, like I said, I wouldn't cut it until I got the other one. So I know where I stopped. Okay. But I'll show you. you know, I would just cut off right next to it because if I'm going to keep going, the next round is going to cover that It'll end. Cover right over it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So if you kind of follow along your stitches or where your stitches are going to go, if it's easier for you to go this way, that's fine too. So, but keeping it close to where you're stitching then covers up where the threads end. Well, that makes sense. How's everybody doing? If is anybody stitching, can we do a um show and tell? Yeah, unpin me. Yeah, we'd love Turn to see. Heather, that looks great. Heather, that looks great. Heather, that's great. great. Let's see. Let's see who else. Good. Oh wow, Kelly, you're you're amazing. Terry, that looks great. Oh, Terry, Kelly, I Michelle missed you. too. Kelly? Love it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Kelly. Wow, stitcher. Or you've done this before. 
That looks awesome. So she switched colors. I'm not ready to switch colors yet. I said, there's no oh, right or wrong way to do any kind of color combo. Kelly, that really came out nice. Good fast stitching. Mom, you just disappeared. Oh. Here I am. Did you get no, anywhere yet? Or are you still wrapping? I stopped wrapping and I started putting pins in, but now I'm I'm just watching. Because I'll have to watch it on, on what you recorded and catch up. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to re-pin. Oh, you guys, cause is it still pinned for you? Or do you guys have to do that? Um... It went back to being pinned for me when you did so. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, if you want a little fun, so if you're like, oh, that really isn't as hard as I thought, and you kind of want a little fun, you can always, even with that, sometimes the fun thing is just to start a new pin, and then you could make it separate. So I could do a gap pin, and then go around and back to, and then it leaves a space. Oh. So that's another fun way you could do a different design element. So you can keep going around the same top pin. You move, you just get another lower pin down and it gives you a gap. You can also put a new pin for this start and start an X row. So that's like this um, dragon kind of egg that I showed you earlier. It's almost the same, it's practically the same stitch that we're doing, except I get started and then I started another one here to do the next row of colors. And then I moved that starting pin down and did the next row colors. So it's that same stitch going up and down, but I'm just gradually moving the starting pin further and further down. So this, even though it looks like I went both ways, I actually just started one way down and kept going and then ended at the other end. Whereas this one, we have it set up that I would do one end and then I would do the other end. Okay. But you can see how similar stitches, it's just taking that same stitch and going over and it weaves it through. So you crossed over the equator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was another design. That's easier to do on that egg, but you can do it on a round one. I used to have one, but I sold them. And I haven't done another one along that line. I don't think, yeah. Okay. So, but if you wanted a little variety and you're like, oh, this isn't, you know, that's one way to add a little extra variety to it without having to do much else than the stitches you're already doing. Oh, I have a message. Uh oh, Michelle said, wait. <laughs> oh. What's up, Michelle? Yeah, come off mute. Tell me what I, what part did I blow your mind on? You're muted. You want to unmute yourself and and ask away. Uh, no, I guess not. <clears throat> oh, did she leave? Maybe that was she had to go. I don't know. She said, wait, with an exclamation point. Michelle is, yeah, she's not here. Oh, well, oh, there's two Michelles, another Michelle. Up. Oh, we lost both Michelles. Yeah. All right. Oh, there she is. Ah. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. What can we help? So Michelle, you have us on the edge of our seats. Why did you scream wait? Uh, she's gone again. Oh, no, there she is. Michelle Rose, did you say wait to us? You're muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could read lips. <laughs> oh. Type in your question. <laughs> yeah, type your question since I can't hear you. Yeah. I'll Sorry, I was not watching chat because I'm watching stitches. So I should have been watching chat more. I'm watching. I'm watching. It's okay. I keep flipping back and forth. 
Oh, that, oh, that was, was a long, long time, time ago, ago, she said. <laughs> All right. So if you want, I can show you how to add an OB. Because they're actually really simple. What's an OB? The hemisphere, the equator. Oh, the equator. Okay. So when you get your design, however you want it, however many you want. So you can see like this strip. And I did a very thin one because I made the points come pretty close. But if you wanted to end yours up here and do a real, the OB is simple, you can wrap a very thick. Um, but an OB, you're just basically taking, kind of like how we did the ribs. I like starting the thread with it still attached. And so I'm going to thread. These are my equator pins. So I'm just going to kind of go under next to an equator, slide out like I did at the rib and tie a knot. And then I pull it back so that goes under. And then I can literally take this and just wrap around the pins of the equator as many times as I want and make it as thick. When I get back to where I started, if I want to change color, then I just stitch underneath, cut off, and then put the next color on. So like you can see here, I did a dark, one round of light on each side of the dark, and then one round of the medium on each side of that. Well, what keeps that in place from, you know, from it sliding off and unraveling? So it, if you're pulling tight, it's holding it in place. Oh. But it's not like you're playing handball with it. So, I mean, it's more decorative. If you were worried about it, you could just wrap this a couple of times, ever many times around, and you could stitch and go around the ribs. But it really, like this one, I literally just stitched in there. That's where I started this one. I mean, it will slide up and down if I force it, but otherwise it's staying in place. I did a decorative metallic over top, but you don't have to do it. As I said, you can have as much fun with making new connection points. So like I went under the rib and did on the inside to make a diagonal that way. But that's, again, I can do all kinds of, you know, repeating designs that I would like for this. But yeah, so an OB you can make as thin or thick. If it was sliding around, I could do this stitch over the OB. So I could go and do this kind of stitch we did with the star at the top of the OB, come over and zigzag up and that wraps it around the OB line too. So I'm repeating the stitches lots of different ways. Okay. OB means sash, doesn't it? Yes. Like a boot. Mm -hmm. And in some of them, like you said, I mean, if I get the points that they could literally meet, then I wouldn't need the equator or the OB around the middle. Some designs do. There have been other designs where like the points will cross over the equator back and forth so I could do it that way so but honestly those are the main stitches for this kind of ball and so if you got those then you're all set this was complex <laughs> it, it, well you know what the hardest part is the setup yeah it's figuring out and learning that but now that you've seen it you're like oh it does make sense once you do it. And so it's easier, but yeah, trying to teach it, especially, you know, when I can't point out over each one hand, I know it's a challenge, but it is pretty, I mean, we all know how to divide a, a ball into sections. So it's just seeing how we did the pinning to make it easy and did the math without me having to measure. Right. And the paper strip I thought is pretty, pretty ingenious. It really is. You know, it's amazing how much easier, how much more math makes sense to me now than it did when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it just, uh, it, it makes complete sense. I'll give you, if you want to see a couple of the ones a little bit more advanced. So like, here's one that did a stitch that went all the way around. This is honestly, I love this stitch. It looks complex, but once you plot the points, it actually goes very quickly to create these parabolic curves. Is that in the book? 
Huh? Is that one in the book? In that one? No, I actually found this one online and it took me forever to find directions for it. But, you know, oh. once I found it, there's lots of ways to do them. So here's another one that's a two hemisphere. And instead of going from point, so this one, it went from top all the way to the other and back up. Oh, so you can see how I can cross over and then it just gets wrapped around the middle. So it's using that same process, but I'm crossing over the hemisphere. But when it gets to this, you kind of put pins because these overlap and slide around a lot because you're creating a very high layer. Right. So that's a little bit more challenging. So it's better to do that one after you've learned the. But you can get as involved. This one took forever because I was doing overlapping, weaving through to create the pattern. Wow. Uh, let's see. I went through this whole color wheel series, and so I know art teachers will appreciate that. So uh, you can get some that have optical illusions. You can get different designs on them. Wow. Uh, let's see. I did kind of a peacock series. And so instead of doing a wrapped OB, I did squares around the center. So this is another one that's a two center. It just has more than eight points. So like I said, you can do as many divisions as you want. You could fold that paper more. I think this one ended up being 16. Count real quick, but because it was so close, when they crossed over, it made more of these overlap to make it look like feathers. So the more closely you get, the more overlap you'll get with some of the stitches. You can literally make images on them. A couple of the ones that I have over on this table actually look like flowers. So okay. I'm like this is one I did lattice work and I saved all my ends and I did the embroidery stitches to do it look like flowers on a fence. Oh wow. And you can create them where you make the design be the negative space. So the base stitch that you color you did and you do the stitches around and that becomes the design. So there's lots of different color patterns. Here's another one with that spiral that I did fish. That's my little koi fish pond. <laughs> Cute. They're beautiful. A lot of fun. I love the one right next to it. You just put it on top of it with the little stars. Nope, the this, black one. With, with the black background. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So this one's similar to the one I'm starting. I'm doing this design. So you can have a lot with pins. This is the one I'm working on. So you see how pin cushioned it is. It's like yeah. every point. So I'm just going around. So, I mean, you can get a lot of pins on them at once. <laughs> oh my goodness. So. Wow. But I do encourage, I mean, if you enjoyed it, definitely look at those two. If you don't want to get a book, watch those videos um, on the different links that if you email me or. Uh, yeah, because I don't have a link. Well, actually, can I pull a link and drop it in the chat? What is the name of the book that you learned from that you oh, showed us? The book. It's by Anna Diamond. Anna? Anna Diamond. And it's Diamond. called The Tamari Book. What is it and called? I'm sorry. The Tamari Book. The Tamari Book. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. I can lend it to you, Mom. I have it. Oh, you have it? Yeah, I bought it. As soon as I saw Russ's uh, first post with the cover of the book on it, I bought it. Oh, Michelle, I'm seeing You have to get it used because it's. I don't think it's published anymore, but you have to get it used. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. well, like I said, I did get it when I was in high school and that was about 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> But there are other books, like I've bought a couple since then. So, I mean, there are other books that are equally as good. If you see anything by a woman named Barbara Seuss, looks like, you know, Dr. Seuss, she's got some incredible resources out there. Um, and she's done videos. She's actually a member of the Tamari group on Facebook that I'm part of, and she'll post occasionally. 
or she has a page you can follow that she she's a great current one that's actively doing and has done a lot with teaching things there's a couple books out by her so if you can't get this one look for one by her as well If there's any, I mean, I know if, I've kept you on for a long time, probably longer than some of you realize you might get stuck. So, I mean, you're repeating, but if someone has a question that they want to ask before they go, feel free to do so. I'll try to help you problem solve. I love it. I can't wait to start my next color. Yeah, it is um, 843 for those of you who, <laughs> who uh, stuck lost, with lost all track of time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to remove the spotlight and maybe if everybody can hold up your work so we can all see Thanks. our progress. Wow. Not much progress for me. <laughs> Those look great. You know so what? Scott, I when, do you, when you guys finish your, your um, tamaris, can you post a picture under whatever... Um, page you saw us in on Facebook so that we could see everybody's progress. Or if you want, you can only post the one half that you finished. Yeah. And you that's do it. the other <laughs> half on your own speed whenever you no want. Pressure. You can make it look like you finished the whole thing. No so, pressure. You know, hold that side and everyone will think, wow, you did the whole thing. <laughs> ah. oh, hey, this Scott, was, this was great. I know Stephanie asked, I know Steph asked about this, but like, wait, let me make my water. Like, I'm just starting to have some, a lot of my little base string, you know, the I coming come off loose. and you just cut it, you said? Yeah. So if it's coming loose as you do it, just, it's that tension when you wrap it. I mean, you, the tighter you hit, the less it's going to move. If it comes loose, literally you can just cut where it's, where it's loose and then just take one end and stitch it back through and take the other end and stitch it back through just so it catches. Okay. The, yeah. Okay. I mean, it was, it's there to give you the layer of thickness so you can stitch the other things through. It's not critical or not a, a worry if one of those, these base threads comes loose, you just cut it and stitch it back underneath. Okay. Yeah. The freaking thing, do, do the pins stay in there? Do we take no, them out? No, no. So when you're all done, you'll take out all your pins. And if you are confident that you went under the threads <laughs> and not your ribs, you could literally <laughs> cut off the ribs. But you don't have to because sometimes the ribs make interesting parts of the design. Other times you can cut them off. Like this one is one where I cut off all those ribs and just left the design. I'll be honest, I didn't cut off the ribs until I was done the whole book and I saw someone else say, oh, you can sacrifice them. I'm like, oh, you can? Okay. <laughs> so then I started doing it after I did the first 70. So, I mean, they look just as good. I sold all the first 70 at my state conference and everyone thought they were lovely so wow. <laughs> they don't know curiosity. To be there. you make it part of your design what do you sell them for i'm curious so i yeah i was like how do you sell it? so i honestly just kind of like totaled up the price and figured out and i was selling the first six for like 15 dollars a ball because i was like i was learning how to do these and i knew some of them were a hot mess <laughs> but if I go on Etsy, I've seen some that are 50, 60, 75. The more centers, it takes longer. The more intricate of the design, like that one where I stitched over and did the pattern. I mean, that right. literally took close to 25 hours. So you can make your adjustments. Um, Steph just saw me post. I A friend of mine is suggesting, do the Harry Potter colors. I'm like, okay. So I did a set of four in the Harry Potter house colors. And they you know, made up those designs as I kind of went to match. And she bought them for 25 each. So, I mean, you know, it's like, I do it for fun. It's literally my zen in the evening of just relaxing and watching TV. And so if I'm making enough that I can use up, replace that time and then also just buy more supplies, I'm happy. But I mean, some of them can get very intricate like you saw with the 92-year-old the grandmothers. You know, so, I mean, the more centers, the more time, the more plotting, you know, and that takes a little bit more effort. That's amazing. I I want to thank you, really, because this has been so much fun and you kind of debunked or demystified the process. Um, it'll still take, obviously, a few more tries to to get it down. But I appreciate you sharing your 
expertise and your new passion um, with all of us. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it and, and was able to, to get something out of this too. <laughs> It was wonderful to see the process and Scott, you explain so well. Oh, thank you. Yes, you've made it very clear. Thank you so much. We'll have, probably have thank to watch you. the video a few more times. <laughs> yeah. And if anybody say. wants the presentation, I posted Scott's email um, in the chat. If you didn't get it, you can email me and I will forward you the his email. Okay. If you want stuff, I can even just send it to you too. And that way, if it cuts out a oh, middleman, yeah. if they email me or if they didn't catch it, I'll give it to you and then you can send it right back down the well. Okay, perfect. Um, so if anybody wants the presentation, Scott will just send it to me. Just request it and I'll forward it on to you. That works. All right. Um, thank you again. And I think we're going to have maybe one more session before I take a summer sabbatical. Uh, to to detangle my innards from this school year. <laughs> Maybe we'll have just a, an art making Zen session and chat session and and drinking stuff session. How's that? <laughs> yeah, cocktail yeah, party good. and making party. Okay, yeah. and Scott, you're you're invited to everything from now on. So thank you. Can I keep you on my mailing list and and you'll get. Awesome. All right. Anyway, thank you all for showing up. Um, look for the next date and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you. you. Bye. All right. Take care, Steph. You thank too. you. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome.